way I like it. Fast, fair, and friendly. Fast, fair, and friendly, you say? That'd be nice for a change. That's correct, ma'am. Fast, fair, and friendly. Unlike this vehicle you're sitting in. Rochester Ford Lincoln, 119 East 4th Street in Rochester. Call 574-223-3161 or on the web at rochesterfordonline.com. And again, the National Weather Service of Northern Indiana telling us we have a 100% chance, or I mean a 70% chance now, they've adjusted it, of showers and thunderstorms and a high of 67, 50-50 chance of rain tonight. And then tomorrow, cloudy with a high of 76, a 50-50 chance tomorrow night with a low of 60. And we will go over the entire forecast a little bit later on. Right now, I welcome to the studios Mr. Tom Bear. Hey, Baron. And uh, we have a special guest waiting for us on the phone lines. By way of telephone, we say good morning to United States Senator Joe Donnelly. Senator, good morning. Good morning. Thanks for having me with you. Hey, thanks very much for joining us today. We appreciate it. We know that uh, you've been very busy. Oh, my gosh. It's been a a busy time, but we're back in Washington, and we're working on the uh, defense bill now. Talk with us about that, yeah. Yeah, this is the bill that provides the... um, the guideposts and the funding for the uh, for our defense uh, of our country for the next year, and so what we're working on is various things like you know the Navy obviously how many carriers we're going to have and and for instance in, in Iraq what are we going to do uh, numbers wise and making sure that we have the finances in place for all of it and so um, that'll be the rest of this week as we're going to be working on that. Does saber rattling by North Korea and countries such as that uh, make any difference in terms of putting this defense bill together? Well, you sure keep an eye on it because you want to make sure that um, no matter what they do, we're ready to protect our country, um, you know, at all circumstances. And so when we see that, we know that much of it is uh, is internal because he's trying to solidify his power with uh you know, some of the other people around him, the military around him. But we also know that we have to be ready. And so if he tries anything, we have stuff in place. And and it certainly does guide, um, in large measure, you know, the things we do. Does this particular bill, Senator, talk about Veterans Affairs as well? Um, what it does is it it sets up for uh, the, the active duty forces. For instance, uh, you know, our men and women in the uh, National Guard, in the Army, in the Marines, um, different standards for mental health care and similar things for mental health care for for other areas finances and that kind of sets a uh, um, sets guidepost for the veterans administration and so the VA will take care of that and we'll be doing the um, the VA bill here um, within the next month or so as an aside it's kind of a nice thing to see the Invictus games going on right now in Florida it is spectacular it's a wonderful wonderful thing uh, Senator, you, you have also been working on, uh, and I'm going to relate these two things, uh, opioid use problems, addiction problems. And I am wondering, are we telling the VA to look more at not handing out pain pills to hide things? Because for years and years, and I can say this from experience, a lot of veterans would tell you, yeah, they don't want to fix the problem. They want to hide it with a pain pill. Yeah, well, that's, uh, that's we hope not happening anymore. I mean, occasionally, you know, you you still get a pain pill. For instance, uh, you, you know, after a knee surgery for the first couple of days, but after that, um, the goal is to not have any um, and to use ibuprofen and, and to have a little bit of pain is not a uh, is is uh, not an uncommon thing, not an un-American thing, so to speak. And so, what we're trying to do is put in place across the board a way to take these illicit pills off the market. What the VA is doing now is coordinating with the state of Indiana um, to help us prevent uh, doctor shopping. Um, for instance, someone who who goes to a local doctor and then goes to the VA trying to get the same prescriptions. And what we're trying to do is make sure that um, the VA is talking to the state and the state is talking to the VA so there's no separate stovepipes that we won't know. And we're trying to cut off the supply, the excess supply, and um, the VA has been a, a partner in that effort. Now, the, the Senate has already passed a measure along this line, right? This is in the House right now. Yeah, we already have. Okay. We, we did that a few months ago, and so we're waiting for the House to uh, uh, to get that done there. And what that will do, um, one of the big areas is it's going to change prescriber practices. So we're working with our pharmacies and with our doctors to try to, for instance, 
um, reduce the number of pills that are given out in a prescription uh, on occasion. I have a friend who got his wisdom teeth taken out, and they gave him 90 Vicodin. 90. 90 euros. <laughs> um, <laughs> and he couldn't even chew them. Touch, yeah, the guy's not going to touch her for the next three months, you know? And, and he, he said, what am I supposed to do with this after the first two days? I said, well, you know what? Turn it in. And, right. and those are the kind of things you look and you go, um, this is really, and it, it, this makes no sense. And so Massachusetts actually passed a law recently that said, because they've had such a huge problem with this, that you can't uh, issue a prescription for pain pills for more than seven days. And so, in, for instance, that Vicodin thing would have been like 10 pills instead of 90. Exactly. Um, and so that's what we're working on, and that reduces the number of pills that are out there. Uh, Senator, as far as the uh, rest of the defense bill goes, where are we at with the F-22? I know we produced a couple of hundred of them originally, and then Defense Secretary Gates shut it down. Uh, they cost almost a half a billion a plane, and then now I'm hearing and reading that we might start making those again and ordering a bunch more. How did that turn out? We are we are trying to run this in a very um, financially responsible manner, as well as at the same time protecting our nation. And so um, the, the questions are, how many F-22s, how many F-35s, um, and how many of, of other planes as well? And so we're trying to get the balance right. But at the same time, um, you, you know, we don't want to have a plane for every member of the military. So we're trying to get it balanced. Are out. we going to get more F-35s at Fort Wayne? Um, what we're going to do is have a fighter wing in Fort Wayne. And so the goal at, on a long-term basis is F-35s. We have the A-10s right now, um, and it all depends on rotations. So we'll keep the A-10s until the either the F-16s come in or the F-35s come in. If the F-16s come in, they will be there for a while and then rotate it out, and the ultimate uh, end point is the F-35s, yes. Yeah. So we're not going to lose our free air show around here every weekend. Because <laughs> I love watching those guys fly over here. Only, only when you jump off the roof with a parachute under that. That's, <laughs> okay. that's the only okay. other free there air show. <laughs> Senator, Senator, is my recollection correct? Did you just recently travel to the Middle East? I did. I was uh, in Iraq, in Israel, in the UAE, in Bahrain, and touch and base with all of our partners because I work a lot on missile defense. Um, that's one of my responsibility areas, and they are obviously concerned about Iran, um, but at the same time want to make sure that they have the ability to protect themselves and to coordinate with uh, the United States. In the minute or so we have left, what did you bring back from that experience, from those travels? Just how much um, some of the, the, the tribal leaders in Iraq, the only people, the only people they trust are the American soldiers. Um, they don't trust their government. They don't trust uh, other countries. The American soldiers who have sat with them, who have worked with them, um, here's what they know. When those, when those soldiers sit with them and they give their word, their word is, our word is our bond. These young men and women take your breath away how good they are. And, and what these tribal leaders told me, they said, as long as we know that there's an American somewhere helping put the plan together or helping to work with us, <clears throat> we have confidence it can work. If we're relying on our central government, we are really, really concerned. And now that's a long-term problem. That's something that's got to be fixed. It's, it's, it's the thousands-long divide between these groups. Um, but at the same time, it tells you just how amazing the young men and women of Fulton County and Miami County and the entire state of Indiana and this country are, that they're the one factor that everybody cares about and trusts. Senator, uh, I am told that Andretti Autosports has a new member of their crew, and I was wondering if you could, from the pictures I'm looking here, uh, you were in the design process, or at least watching it happen as they put these pieces of metal together to make these space-age vehicles. Can you tell us a little about that? Uh, the, the vehicles are amazing. They take your breath away. Carbon fiber, which is you know weighs as much as a feather and is as strong as steel. But here's what you want to know. If you see me on any of the pit crews, that car will not do well on five. <laughs> well, uh, I was going to leave the they, Andretti they, reputation alone. <laughs> <laughs> they, well, I don't mean that part. I mean that uh, they said I was one of the tire changers, and the other guys are all done. And I was figuring out how to turn the lug nuts. So. <laughs> Senator, as always, said, we... boy, if, 
If there was a driver in this car, he would kill you by now, Senator. It's not that little jack that you get in your own car, is it? <laughs> no, and neither is the spare, that little that little tire. That yeah, there are no donuts down there. <laughs> None. <laughs> Senator, as always, we certainly appreciate talking with you today. We know you've got a busy day ahead of you, so thank you very much, and uh, enjoyed the conversation. Thank you. Thank you. It's a real privilege. Thank you. Indiana United States Senator Joe Donnelly, and uh, we covered a lot of ground in about 10 minutes there. Barry. Yeah, well, no more time than what we Yeah, had. we were supposed to have seven or eight. We took 10. Yeah, yeah. that'll happen. Yeah, it'll happen. Ac- Whoever's waiting can wait. <laughs> yeah, right. I have zero sympathy for <laughs> I, it. Me too. <laughs> Put the stopwatch <laughs> away. We're going. That's all he's, there is uh, to it. He's kind of right about that codeine thing, though, because when I was in college, I remember, and this is a thousand years ago, if you had a hangnail or an ingrown hair, oh, they yeah. handed you a bottle of codeine lace cough syrup. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, that's exactly right. You know, I, that, that was what your parents gave you when you had a cough as a yeah. kid. Yeah, know? for you kids out there, yeah, you don't cough, remember. <laughs> cough syrup uh, was laced with codeine. You the know? booze was safe because you get into and the they, cough and they, syrup. They tried to disguise it in a cherry flavor, and it yes. didn't work. <laughs> no. No. It did not work. <laughs> no. Mom's standing there pouring cough syrup onto the pot roast. I mean, come on. <laughs> That was an interesting question you asked the senator about uh, his time at uh, the pit crew as well. Well, yeah, they sent us that uh, press release, and it's it's got his pictures. He's actually in the uh, area where they're cutting and designing the body parts for these cars, ah, and they wow. are they're a, wow. they're a spaceship. That's it is what they amazing, are. isn't it? And uh, anyway, I thought that I got a kick out of that. I was going to stay away from the whole Andretti uh. thing. <laughs> <laughs> Very interesting. Yes. Aaron, as always, I uh, appreciate it. Good job. Thank you, kind sir. And as promised, we'll take a look at the full forecast now. Again, today you were looking at, uh, they've downsized it. 70% chance showers and a thunderstorm in the afternoon, a high of 67. 50-50 chance tonight and a low of 55. Just cloudy tomorrow, a high of 76. And then tomorrow night back to a 50% chance of rain and a low of 60. Then on Thursday, it's a 50% chance of showers and thunderstorms, a high of 76. Thursday night, cloudy, a low of 53. And then on Friday, it's mostly sunny with a high of 66, but then it's back to cloudy Friday night with a 40% chance of rain and a low of 44. Saturday, partly sunny, high of 56, and a low of 40. Right now, outside the window on 8th Street, we have cloudy skies and 53 degrees. Logan Sport is 55. Warsaw is 51. 